In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. We celebrate tonight a very important saint, the patron of the Institute of Christ the King, Sovereign Priest, a saint that we all should know about, especially during these latter times. For St. Francis de Sales, becoming what God has created us to be is the goal of human life and the singular way to find real beatitude, real happiness. This is holiness, and it is not derived in merely the quantity of novenas we pray, nor the number of devotions we practice, nor the amount of chaplets we pray. We must not get confused that the devout life consists simply and merely of the preparation prayers or thanksgivings we make for the most holy communion, nor the fastings and abstinence we plan for Lent, nor simply the charitable acts that we do virtually every day. Rather, holiness and true devotion consists in the fusion of our will to that of our Lord that makes these good prayers, these holy actions, spiritually fruitful and thus help us on our path to holiness, to our journey to heaven. Because if these are not accompanied by our loving heart to serve the Lord, then these are rather false and empty. In order to learn more about true devotion to God and a true devout life, let us recall certain aspects that the Holy Saint excelled and how this made him unique amongst the saints and why the Institute of Christ the King Sovereign Priest adopts his spirituality for the betterment of our souls. You see, St. Francis de Sales was beloved of God and of men. Many of the saints we know and love and cherish exhibit the grave, the austere, the majestic aspect of holiness. We see in St. Francis the dominant traits that he exuded were holy charity and holy kindness. In him, the dignity of priest and prince bishop is tempered by gentleness of manner. God wishes to give us in this saint an image of his own mildness and mercy. Things that are so desperately lacking in this world. How ought we, dear faithful, be mindful of the manner we comport ourselves to others? Sometimes we admit we get our barbaric moments of hilarity with our friends and neighbors over a very small joke, for example. Or we might be overbearing in our dialogue and actions with colleagues, which then transforms into a one-on-one debate of who's right and who's better. But let us remember how we can imitate the gentleness of such a noble saint. When he was receiving people, for example, everyone could approach him, assured of a kindly reception. The life of this holy prince bishop was heroic, containing many acts of sublime virtue and self-denial. Yet his sanctity consisted chiefly in the perfection with which he did everything. Prudence, moderation, discretion preside his every deed. He became all things to all men, 
as alluded in holy, the Holy Collect of today's Mass, with great attention and carefulness, he avoided both haste and neglectful delay. This was truly a hallmark of his character, very well balanced and natural. He sees God in everything, in the mighty ones of earth, in his friends, and in the poor. Even the smallest details of his life are worth to be imitated, since he practiced perfection in everything, even in the most common of actions, which he never tires recommending to others. We know it is not in the accomplishment alone of rare and great heroic acts of courage or martyrdom in the face of death, but rather in the perfection of the little acts and tasks that we do, that we are able to do for our Lord and neighbor every day, which would please our Lord and His holy will. Dear faithful, we must remember too, just like today in our Catholic world, heresy and confusion was rampant during St. Francis's time. Protestantism was the error that the saint was facing. Yet, instead of reacting like political pundits or talking heads of our own times, he understood to effectively combat the errors of Protestantism, who were the Calvinists, and lead back to the church these souls with his profound knowledge, with the divine power of apostolic zeal, and especially with his meekness and gentleness. Recall, dear faithful, that St. Francis de Sales brought back 70,000 souls back to the church due to his undying and tireless acts of charity and meekness. Although we cannot be like St. Francis de Sales 100%, we can surely adopt his way of life expressed in his prolific writings. Maybe it had been a long time since our last read of the introduction to the devout life. So it might be a good way to refresh ourselves in this great book. Surprising it is to find people who are still not aware of this great spiritual work and saint nor find it in some Catholic family libraries. It is true that there are many saints who we can imitate, but the holiness of St. Francis de Sales is eminently suited for our imitation. He sets before us the rules of the perfect life, and he exemplifies them in his own life virtues, and especially the small ones that he mentions, we can practice daily, are revealed to us in acts very simple and natural that we might almost say common, that we are encouraged to imitate them, such as the virtues of humility, simplicity, meekness, and holy charity. We might be tempted to say, canon, that it was easier for the saint to practice holiness during his own time, and that we here at the present moment are indeed in most difficult trying times, especially with the utterly confusing dialogues, ambiguous wordplay, and top-down declarations we read in recent months coupled with so many distractions from our own jobs and duties that we cannot simply live the devout life anymore in this age. Before we make this rash conclusion, let us recall a consideration of a certain bishop who knew of St. Francis directly and personally. This certain bishop who knew him said, I have been puzzled when I hear of men 
who, having dedicated themselves to God, complain because they are called into many active duties which they label great distractions. But is any occupation really distracting, dear faithful, except those which separate us from God? Yet only sin can do that. No lawful occupation separates us from Him. Indeed, it is a means for closer union. This may be said of all vocations. Doctors, lawyers, merchants, artisans, every kind of rightful calling may be directed to the glory of God amidst the most violent conditions. We are so dismayed by the growing confusion, but in the midst of this, let us not forget the great teachings of St. Francis de Sales. Oh, if they, if only they were to live these teachings of St. Francis de Sales, confusion and error would decrease. You see, this same bishop quoted earlier said again, Let us belong to God entirely, even amidst the tumult and worries involved in the diversity of human affairs. What better proof can we give of our fidelity than perseverance amidst such contradictions? We must be of good cheer, no matter where we are, remembering that God's help is always accessible to those who trust in Him. Such beautiful testimony of this bishop, Bishop Camus, who knew St. Francis de Sales. He was his mentor. St. Francis was his mentor so that he also became a good and holy bishop later on. And we always remember that famous saying of St. Francis de Sales. St. Francis would often say, to cook the milk of charity until it tastes sweet. If we, like St. Francis de Sales, cook our own milk of truth, the milk of truth of God, with the slow-burning heat of charity, then this milk soup of our charity would then be very sweet and agreeable to our palate. Just like the sweetness of French macarons and pains au chocolat that the saint might have eaten during his travels to France and Italy. Just to be clear, he was from the Duchy of Savoy, or Savoy in American English. St. Francis de Sales' great balance and equity in all things, whether it be in practical or spiritual matters, will truly help us sail through the murky waters and trials with calmness of mind, gentleness, courage, and patience. St. Paul says, Let all your things be done in charity. And St. Francis would add to that by saying, What is the use of running the race if we do not reach the goal? Or of drawing the bow if we do not hit the target? How many good works are rendered, rendered useless as regards our salvation for lack of of this motive of charity. Therefore, dear faithful, let us continue to be good sons and daughters of charity so that we can always love our Lord, who is the source of charity, and love our neighbor, who is the recipient of this holy charity, so that God, who is charity, may always be the beginning and end of all our actions. St. Francis de Sales, pray for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.